Greetings YouTube viewers and welcome to another video on the Ian Bullock channel. Today it's Thursday the 1st of December 2022 and we find ourselves here at the junction of Grove Road, Brazen Gate and Queen's Road here in central Norwich, Norfolk, East Anglia in the UK. I want to talk to you today about this office building Victoria House which for about 50 years has been home to many thousands of insurance workers in Norwich. If I'm honest, I didn't even realise myself that this building was called Victoria House until I started researching this video. It began life with the insurance company Bland Payne and then through various mergers and acquisitions it became Sedgwick, often known in the city as Sedgwick's and since 1998 it's been home to the Norwich operations of the global insurance company Marsh, Marsh McLennan. So viewers, just make a mental note of this grey brick wall here on the left that I'm leaning on because I'll be talking about that in a moment. This office building has been the home to Marsh employees for many years and Marsh is part of the global insurance brokers and risk specialists Marsh McLennan based in America. So you might be looking at this video and saying well if it's such a big and busy insurance office why does the place look completely deserted? Now the reason for this is because in recent months Marsh staff have moved out of here and relocated to Willow House on the Broadland Business Park at Thorpe St Andrew. So essentially the Norwich operations have moved to newer and more modern offices on the edge of the city and are no longer in their Norwich city centre headquarters. So this substantial office building in the city centre has now effectively been mothballed, the marsh signage and flags have all been taken down and the future of the site seems quite uncertain at the moment. That grey brick wall that I mentioned earlier used to be a railway bridge and unbeknown to me, even though I've lived in this area for more than 30 years, the whole Marsh Officers site used to be a railway station here in Norwich called Victoria Station. I'll talk about Victoria Station a little later in this video. What we're looking at here is Queen's Road, which forms part of the Norwich Inner Ring Road with a collection of different buildings, modern purpose-built student flats on the left, Ivory House in the middle, a period property which has been turned into flats. And on the right of the picture here, a large building called Sentinel House, which used to be an Aviva Norwich Union office and call centre, which in recent years has been turned into apartments. There's been a bit of a trend here in Norwich in recent years for turning unwanted commercial office space into luxury apartments or student accommodation. This particular building has been purpose-built for student accommodation in the city centre. And if you look just over where our bus station is, you may be able to see two black office blocks which are just above where that red double-decker bus is. Now those used to be Norwich Union Aviva officers but they've now been turned into student accommodation called Crown Place. And I'll show you the front of those buildings a little later. So let's talk about Victoria House. I don't have a precise construction date for this well-known though not always well-liked office building but I'm going to guess around the early to mid 1970s. I'd say it's in the brutalist style with all that endless concrete and those huge expanses of glass which was popular in the 1960s and 70s around the UK for office blocks, shopping precincts, social housing schemes, universities and multi-storey car parks. Indeed, in my previous YouTube videos I've already focused on a couple of other classic brutalist buildings in Norwich the now badly dilapidated Sovereign House, Anglia Square, 
and the well-preserved and maintained Prospect House in Rouen Road. While essentially brutalist in its architecture, this particular building, Victoria House, the former home of Marsh, is maybe a little bit more diluted, not quite so jagged and certainly less Eastern Bloc, Iron Curtain, In Your Face brutalist as some of its older 1960s counterparts. Personally, I feel it's more discreet, streamlined and understated, set back from the busy ring road with room to breathe. And as you'll see here from my video, it's softened by an envelope of trees and green landscaping. It was originally named Bland Payne House, that's P-A-Y-N-E, -E, after the first insurance business which occupied the offices. And yes, I'm sure there are some who would argue that Bland and Payne are the precise words which spring to mind when you look at its architecture. From various conversations I've had over the years, I know that many of the good citizens of Norwich regard this office building as yet another blot on the landscape of our fine city. A ghastly giant mothership from Planet Ugly, which has crash-landed on Norfolk soil. A piece of 1970s space junk left over from the props department of Blake 7. I beg to differ, however, for I've always had something of a soft spot for this beige concrete monolith. I really admire its uncluttered simplicity of design, clean lines, lack of pretentiousness, and its no-nonsense, no-frills corporate functionality. Put simply, it is what it is. Back in its 1970s heyday, of course, this would have been an ambitious and state-of-the-art new office complex for Norwich, building on the city's international reputation as a centre of excellence in the booming financial services sector. A landmark statement building, purpose-built to house one of the biggest financial workforces in the city, Bland Payne House would have been both a symbol of success and a celebration of commercial wealth. This was a building with a proud message worth shouting from its flat concrete rooftops. We're modern, we're confident, we're a growing business, we're the shape of the future. And by 1970s Norwich standards, we're effortlessly cool. OK, YouTube viewers, I've just brought you down here to St Stephen's, which is one of Norwich's main shopping streets and if you look in the centre of the picture here you'll see some graffiti which is what used to be our British home stores and above it you'll see the frontage of two office towers which used to be Norwich Union Aviva office space but in more recent years have been turned into Crown Place which is a £45 million scheme to create accommodation here in Norwich City Centre for 700 students. Norwich already has several brutalist buildings dotted around the city, including this one, Sovereign House at Anglia Square, which was built in the late 1960s as the home of Her Majesty's Stationery Office when operations of HMSO moved up from London to Norwich. There's actually an entire video devoted to Sovereign House on my channel already because unfortunately this concrete and glass building has stood empty for many years and is now badly dilapidated and falling to pieces. This concrete brutalist building has done much better however. This is Prospect House in Rouen Road which for many years was the home of Eastern Counties newspapers and Archant. I've lived in Norwich for many years and I just never realised that the site of Victoria House, the Marsh office building, used to be a railway station. 
At this point, I'd like to thank the Norwich internet blogger, the Mile Crossman, for information and photographs for this YouTube video. Now, it's hard to imagine that there used to be a railway station for passengers right slap bang in the middle of the city on what is now the Marsh Officers site. But in fact, there was a railway station here up until 1916. And this photograph from the Mile Cross Man is trying to show what the site would have looked like back in its days as a railway station. To be honest, it's a shame that station isn't there anymore because Norwich's railway station, known as Thorpe Station, is in a pretty hopeless kind of location, nowhere near the city centre. So here we had the Great Eastern Railway-owned Victoria Station, which operated from this site for 67 years, serving passenger links to London. But trains were to operate from here for much longer than that. Victoria Station opened in 1849, and although the passengers stopped coming and going in 1916, the station evolved into a busy goods station, enabling it to survive right up until 1966 and beyond. It actually carried on even longer than that because it continued as a coal depot and from the other side of the road on Brazen Gate, where the Sainsbury's Queen's Road supermarket now sits. I've lived in the area for more than 30 years, but I certainly didn't have any idea the Victoria Station ever existed on the site of the Marsh Building. So I can also tell you that the Marsh Building, pictured here with the old Marsh signage up and in the snow, also has a very, very tenuous link with the Beatles. Now bear with me on this one, viewers, because this story in the words of the Beatles, is a bit of a long and winding road. Now, it starts off with this building here, Pablo Fanke House, which is opposite John Lewis in All Saints Green, and has been built relatively recently as purpose-built student accommodation in the city centre. And actually, if you scroll further down my YouTube channel, you'll see that there's already an entire video devoted to the connection between Norwich and the Beatles. So, the Beatles connection revolves around this fine fellow, William Darby, who grew up in Norwich and later joined the circus and changed his name to the rather more exotic and glamorous Pablo Fanke. Our friend here, Pablo Fanke, was a showman, an accomplished horseman and also an entrepreneur and he later gained fame as Britain's first black circus proprietor. In a strange kind of way, Pablo Fanke's name has now become known worldwide because he is mentioned in one of the songs on the classic Beatles album, Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. As I said in my other YouTube video, the Beatles were inspired to write the song Being for the Benefit of Mr Kite after Lennon and McCartney saw a poster for Pablo Fanke's Circus, which was advertising a performance, I think, in Rochdale, which was a special benefit performance for Mr Kite, and he was one of Pablo Fanke's circus artistes. And there's a classic line in that song that says, the Hendersons will all be there later Pablo Fanke's fair. Now, back in the day, of course, there wasn't much by way of health provision or pension provision for circus performers. So this would have been a special benefit performance with the proceeds going to Mr Kite. So we're to assume that Pablo Fanke was a generous, spirited and kind employer running the circus. And that, folks, is how the long and winding road leads us back to Victoria House, the Marsh Insurance Building. Not only did I not realise that there was a railway station on that site, but before that, it used to be a pleasure garden. And it turns out that Pablo Fanke's circus performed on that very site. So Pablo Fanke was performing on that site back in 1848 
and his name is now immortalised not only in the Beatles song on the Sgt Pepper's album, but also his name has been given to Pablo Fanke House, this beautiful looking modern building in the heart of Norwich, opposite John Lewis. Pablo Fanke House was designed by the architects Carson and Partners, and what a lovely job they did with that. Similarly, round the corner, Carson and Partners also designed this building, which is opposite Marsh, and is student accommodation for students from the Norwich University of the Arts. And this is the All Saints Green Halls of Residence. I'm just walking now through one of the less glamorous parts of Norwich. This is the St Stephen's Roundabout underpass, which will bring us up at Victoria House. So in recent years, as I've mentioned, there have been a lot of efforts to try and get students, more and more of them, into the city centre. And part of this is to put them into clusters and have some kind of an effect on the city centre economy. Unfortunately, as we all know, students aren't the most wealthy sector of society, in fact, far from it. And I can't help thinking that the loss of up to a thousand Marsh employees, salaried employees from Victoria House moving out of the city to the edge of the city at Broadland Business Park must have blown a huge hole in the Norwich economy in terms of people who would have come in and out of work, gone out in their lunch hours and their coffee breaks and spent money around the shops, cafes and businesses of the city centre. And they've now all gone out to the edge of the city at Thorpe St Andrew. As I mentioned earlier, Marsh here in Norwich is part of a worldwide operation of the US-based business Marsh McLennan. And that has operations in more than 130 different countries and also 45,000 staff around the world. Marsh employees working here in Norfolk have regular contact with their colleagues in the USA, including New York. And tragically, Marsh McLennan lost 358 colleagues and friends on September the 11th, 2001, during the terrorist attacks on the Twin Towers. Now, following those terrible attacks, a memorial tree was planted outside the front reception entrance of Victoria House here in Norwich. And I understand that following the relocation of staff to Broadland Business Park, that tree has actually been removed and replanted out at the new offices. And indeed, cuttings were taken uh, so that if the tree fails to establish itself in its new location, the legacy of the memorial tree will go on. Talking of trees, one of the things I've always really admired about Victoria House is how, despite its ginormous proportions, the office block itself is comparatively modest within the scale of its site. The offices themselves are admirably set back from the ring road with a frontage framed by charming gardens and greenery. Gardens which over the years have provided an unlikely inner city home to a range of flora and fauna. So it's a question now of what happens to this prime city centre site. Whether the offices are retained and reused either as office accommodation, student flats, luxury apartments or whether the entire office building is demolished and the site is used for something else. Retail space, maybe. New homes. Who knows? I don't think that this 1970s office building has any particular architectural merit or protected status in planning terms, but I'd nevertheless be rather sad to see our dear old Victoria House demolished. For all its boring beige blandness, let's not forget that this office building has been the daily home to thousands of Norwich insurance workers for something like half a century. It's the people, after all, who give buildings their soul. Indeed, a friend of mine worked in this building for 35 years up until very recently 
having joined in the Sedgwick insurance days back in 1987. This is how she reflects upon her time there. Looking back, she says, they were very happy days. The building was thriving, a throng of activity, and held more than a thousand people before the coronavirus pandemic. It was a fantastic place to work, as there were always brilliant events organised by the Sports and Social Club, which is still going strong today. Lots of colleagues, myself included, met our future partners at work and married, and there was much socialising after work and at the weekends. My friend also reminded me about the way in which the Marsh car park has been opened up for many years and marshalled by Marsh staff as a Christmas car park for shoppers and that's benefited a range of charities over the years to the tune of tens of thousands of pounds. The sunset views from the upper floors of Victoria House across the city were stunning at times, she says. Looking at it now, the office building looks very dated, but if I'm honest, it never really felt that way to me at the time. I will close this video with some more words from my Marsh friend, which I find quite touching. She tells me, Living so close to the building here in central Norwich, I do feel quite attached to it and possessive towards it and really hope that it has an exciting and relevant future. I do like our new Marsh office at Broadland Business Park, but I still feel that I've left a piece of my heart in Victoria House. Thank you so much for watching this video, viewers. We'll be following the fortunes of Victoria House and the former Marsh Insurance site very closely in the months ahead. This is Ian Bullock in Norwich, Norfolk, UK, and it's December the 1st, 2022.